Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. Our guest is a woman who dropped out of school at 16, became a rock star, a TV and radio personality, but most recently, she has become a witch. And we're going to talk about witchcraft. And I would like to welcome Fiona Horn. Hi, Barry. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> That's a bit of a scary introduction. Well, I Dropping think out of school at 16, and now she's a witch. Well, oh, we fast forward a little bit. Yeah. You're at least 18 now. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you wrote some wonderful books on witchcraft and magical journey and Seven Days to a Magical New You. Mm -hmm. But before we start, why don't we go back and talk about your brief background. Okay. Well, um, I did leave school at 16. I, I did that because I got a job and I was impatient to get on with my life and, and just explore my life. And uh, so I got out there and, and did some work. But I guess it's indicative of the fact that I've got a very inquisitive nature. Mm -hmm. And that's what drew me to witchcraft. Because I was brought up a Catholic child. And I think when you're brought up Catholic, you sort of taught there's only one other religion in the world. And that's not being Catholic, <laughs> basically. And so I was kind of, I, you know, I've heard of this word witchcraft, but I always thought it was something negative and satanic and evil based that's on the, what I was learning. That's what people usually think of. Absolutely. You know, the evil old hag and Hollywood, you know, the warty nose casting spells and chopping up babies and throwing them into, you know, cauldrons with bat's blood and everything. And I was thinking like, well, it sounds quite interesting. As a 13 year old, you're thinking, oh, you know, that sounds exciting, but nasty and negative And I, I didn't relate to it. But it, it, I started to look for alternatives to my Catholic upbringing. And throughout my teens, I, I was very much drawn to exploring my spirituality and, and through reading books and and uh, just doing my own personal investigation, I found out that witchcraft actually is not satanic. But real witchcraft, like Wicca, which is what I practice and write about in my books, is not satanic. It's actually um, a nature-worshipping, goddess-oriented spiritual path, and that spoke very strongly to me. So that's the difference between witchcraft and Wicca, is goddess within? Well, Wicca is witchcraft. I think okay. it's, it's an unfortunate thing that witchcraft, the term, has been so maligned, and, and the term witch, is such is, has come to mean such a negative description of usually I what feel, is considered a woman. And know? I feel like right now with all the incense yeah, burning here, yeah. I'll, I'll just fly that <laughs> the other way. So you don't start <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> it's kind of like uh, we're in this um, stirring the pot and everything else. Well, it is. I mean, it's it's kind the, of the wonderful thing about witchcraft is that it's very creative, and there are evocative, beautiful, sensual things like incense and candlelight and all these gorgeous things. I mean, we can talk about about all this stuff Absolutely. here in a moment, but um, but certainly with witchcraft, I guess, and, and linking it to my background, it was something that I was drawn to explore, mm -hmm. but I kept it very quiet. I mean, I'm 35 now. I kept it really quiet all through my 20s. I, I was aware of the negative misconceptions that were out there, and I was a singer in a rock band. That was my primary career through my 20s, as I was in a successful band in Australia, and we, we had a bit of success in America. We were on MTV and did a few things, but... Um, it was an exciting life, but I didn't feel it was right to come out about the craft and my interest in it. And I was, and it's a very personal thing too. It's not a gimmick. It's not something you do to say, "Hey, look at me! I'm a weird. Woohoo! I'm a witch." I was weird enough. I was a rock star. So it's like I didn't need to be a witch as well. And really, it was when the band broke up four years ago that I had. Well, yeah, it was four years ago. But I had the opportunity to write a book about witchcraft. And and this first book, Witch: A Magical Journey, which is out here in in the states, came out in January in. Um, 2001, which is what we're in now, isn't it? Yes. Um, it's actually two books combined. Uh, the first two books that I wrote in Australia, which uh -huh. a personal journey, which was my story after the band broke up, which was very traumatic. I can and imagine. I wrote from from the heart. And certainly, I'd worked as a journalist, but I'd never written anything longer than say 2,000 words. <laughs> so to write a book was quite a big deal. But um, the first book was very successful, and through people's in, you know, interest in that first book, and no one expected it. I mean, my publishers did a tiny little print run and thought, oh, a novelty, a, a rock star writing a book about witchcraft, oh, that'll sell it, you know, a bit. But so many people were interested. And that led me to write the second book, which was a how-to book about how do you practice it. And the two were edited together into this edition for America. Well, this is great. Mm. Because would you find that witchcraft or Wicca is being more accepted today and it's the mm. fastest growing religion, so to speak? Well, you've hit the nail on the head. It absolutely is. And there's, there are, um, you know, uh, studies and reports done in Australia, there's a census report that every three years it's taken and everyone in the country has to answer a questionnaire. It's an oh, enormous really? undertaking, absolutely. My mother works for the Bureau of Statistics, so I know all about it. Um, <laughs> but they have to answer religion, what oh. do you put? 
and increasingly people have been putting wicker or no, um, nature-based. There's, there's a category that's sort of nature-based and actually Buddhism comes under that too, the Eastern sort of philosophies of Buddhism and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, Hindu faith. And, um, and witchcraft comes under that category, wicca comes under that category and it is the fastest growing. That Absolutely. And I spent a lot of time in the UK, I've just done a TV show there, a spellcasting show and you know, um, there it's, it's huge too, but the roots of it come from there. Like the roots of Wicca are based on um, pagan practices of the, the old Celtic tribes of Northern Europe. So it's very shamanic, very earth-oriented spirituality that, that relates very much to people of Western origin, you know, rather than say Eastern, but there are similarities between the two. Now, what would you say are some tips to do in Wicca mm -hmm. or not to do? Not to do. Well, I should say not to do. You don't hex people. It's very naughty. Where's my camera? Naughty, naughty. Don't do it. <laughs> it's, and then um, because? Well, I mean, in a, in a simplistic sense, there are three kind of laws of witchcraft. And, you know, modern witches now are thinking it's all a bit patriarchal sounding and a bit too rigid and inflexible. And, but, you know, three basic laws. Do what you want as long as you don't hurt anyone. Okay. Do what you want as long as you don't interfere with anyone else's free will. And be aware that as you act or send out so returns threefold. Now the threefold law is, is what some you know modern witches have a problem with. I sort of take it that it's more meant to sort of say be aware of your responsibility as far as how you act, how you tread on the planet. Try to tread lightly. Don't leave big, heavy, ugly, damaging footsteps. Try to be at one with the elements and at one with your, you know, your fellow humans and do positive and constructive things. But be aware that the cycles of death and destruction and decay and difficulty and, and sadness and anger and all those darker emotions are valid parts of life too. But certainly um, when it comes to spell casting, we don't hex. I mean, I have a chapter in here called Bitchcraft, <laughs> as you would Bitchcraft. And the first, the opening line is, I won't turn to it, but it says, ha ha, I bet this is the first chapter you turn to because everyone wants to know about, oh, you know, can you do evil spells on other people? But the thing is, those spells are very hard to do effectively. Generally, only very inexperienced or emotionally unstable people would even attempt them, and they're straight away not going to work because you need to be very focused. It's, it's your will that makes a spell work. You're the glue that holds all this stuff together. So you have to be very focused. And, you know, hexing's just not not really a sensible thing to do. Well, that sounds good to me, because mm. it goes back to the Old Testament, what you do when others... You As you sow, so shall you reap. Thank but, you. But, you know, you do have Moses saying, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but that's sort of... Um, I think humans have evolved beyond that now, we understand now, even even with, you know, the terrible things that have happened in New York, the, the lesson, the greatest lesson we've had from that is about love and compassion and unity and tolerance and, you know, and very positive things that I don't think those terrorists expect to ignite in the hearts of New Yorkers and the rest of the Western world. But um, certainly, I think with witchcraft, you, you see in those difficult situations that there has to be, you know, there's always the other side. And, right. you know, there was a chapter I wrote um, in another book, it has to be dark to see the stars. Sometimes in your darkest moment is when you reach your greatest enlightenment. And that's, that's really the message and the journey and the passage of of someone's life if they practice witchcraft is you don't you don't try and steer away from the difficulties you don't try to deny them you don't go white light white light fluffy new age bunnies hopping everywhere it's all good it's all good it's all good <laughs> it's actually like sometimes you've got to accept that bad stuff happens right and that's and, and the lesson in life and, and the greatest wisdom you can gain is by going through that now you know. how do you see with empowering a woman well in an in a very obvious way the goddess is okay. a term that when I was brought up as a young Catholic, there was no God S. It was just God. Then there was the spare rib, which was us, you know, the women, spare rib of Adam, right. <laughs> Eve. And, um, and we were the source of all evil and root of all sin. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't mean, to, I mean, I really respect the Catholic faith. I mean, I'm making light of it, but I make light of everything usually. But, I mean, I like, I like to have a little, you know, not take things too seriously. But having said that, um, what is empowering for women about witchcraft is the role the goddess plays. And it's a very, it's a, an omnipresent role. I mean, we have here the, the goddess represented as the Gaia statue. This is, you know, the witch's altar. But it's, um, men practice witchcraft and are drawn to that respect that is held within the craft for the goddess, for the female, for the, the divinity or the principle of the divine that is inherently female as much as male, you know. And I think for women, when we've in so many ways been shut out of that spiritual divine view of the world and human consciousness it's a very empowering thing you know our bodies are healthy and beautiful and gorgeous our ability to give birth is respected and honored and um you know it's it's very it's heady words it's it's it, you know it helps you feel good about yourself it does mm. tell us about your altar here okay well this is 
this is just a stripped down version of the basic witch's altar, but there, um, it was funny, as we started, you were going, oh, move the incense, it's making me sneeze. <laughs> There's a reason it's here over in the eastern quarter. Basically, okay. what, I'm, what I'm saying here is we've got, we've got uh, north, south, actually, we should swap these. I did this for the camera, excuse me, just one okay. moment. Here we go. We're going, we have to swap them right over. Hang on. It's probably easier just to do it like this. Um, Whatever it works. The thing, the, the thing with this is because I'm, I live in the southern hemisphere, right. the, um, the directions are changed. To describe, it's probably a little bit deep. There's four basic elements of witchcraft that we work magic with, air, earth, fire and water. And we see those represented in the, the points of the compass, north, south, east and west. Oh, all right. Okay. Now, when I'm in the southern hemisphere, hemisphere in Australia, where I'm from, I will look to the north and I will look to the hottest part of Earth, which is the equator, which is where the sun peaks. So fire, the element of fire is in the north. For okay. you. For me. All right. Okay. And then it's, and the element of Earth is in the south because you're away from, from the heat of the sun. Now in the northern hemisphere though, you it's look reversed. south. Absolutely. Okay. So you look south to the fire. Right. You look north to the Earth. And then you look east and west. East represents air, new beginnings, it's where the sun rises. And west is what we represent that as water. It's where the sun sets. So east represents new beginnings, new ideas. West represents emotions, closure. You know, it's 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 you know a closing. Not so much closing, but it's like a it's like the cauldron of the cycle. It's where all the things go into the pot and stir around the emotional side of things. So these four elements represent the the uh, quarters. And when we cast a sacred circle, when we create a sacred space, we call on those four elements, and we face the quarters that we see them. Okay, now so why this is all over the shop because we, we kind of, I kind of set it up for the camera and then I kind of set it up for us and then it was all, but anyway, basically the four elements are represented here and okay. that's the important now thing. Now you said you form a circle? You, okay, yeah, what well is, we, for we, what purpose? Well, we see circles as being um, a sacred space and a, a, like a, a shape, sacred shape that right. relates to the goddess. So um, you could even look at it like, a, you know, Goddess time is all things happening all at once in, in a sphere, a sphere of enormous potential. And you can look at something like linear time, past, present, future, which is very linear and very, you know, Newtonian sort of building blocks view of life. You know, you can kind of chop everything up into its little pieces and then pull them apart, put them back together, and it's all in that order. Whereas the goddess element of time is all things happening all at once. So in saying that, we create a magic sphere around us, which we believe is a, you know, a space of potential to create change, to do magic, um, as opposed to building a building and, you know, having it sort of very rigid and like square. that. Square. Yeah, square, square. <laughs> so, um, so we create a sacred space and we do that by casting circle, which is, is a ritual that we do. But we see the circle not only form as a ring around us, but as a, an egg-like shape above and below us. And that's, you know, the egg is a symbol of life and creation too. So there's, I, I guess in saying all this, that there's a lot of symbolism in witchcraft. There's a lot of things to kind of think about, but really, if you're, you don't have to remember everything all at once, you know, and the, the important thing about this altar here is that the four elements are represented. Water, air with the incense, the goddess statue of, of Gaia is earth, and, and fire, green. you know, and green, absolutely. And they're, they're the four elements represented, and that's the basic start. And anyone could set up an, a witch's altar in their house by just having, you know, a little space with these four things represented. Okay, now you have some other instruments here. Yeah, well, I have this here because it's the um, witch's star. All right. You know, the, the, the pentagram here. And, and the thing with this is that so many people see this and they think, oh, if it's inverted, it's a sign of Satan. Have we got that on camera? Hang on there. I'll twist it. There we go. Satan. It's so not. That's wrong. That's just heavy metal bands that do that. Because <laughs> I was wondering, why is it five stars? Five points. Well, five we, points. we believe um, it represents the four elements, mm -hmm. as I described, and spirit, the fifth being us, spirit. Ah, okay. So, um, and that, that's what the star represents to us. There's, again, there's a lot of different ways of interpreting it, but really the main message of it, and Alistair Crowley actually said this, he's a famous occult sort of scholar and and a uh, controversial figure in, in the occult scene, but he, um, he did say one thing that was very true, every man and woman is a star. And in saying that, we are born of the stars, we're the stuff of stars. And you know, you can look at any documentary now on the birth of Earth and the human species, if you know, if people can believe that we evolved of this Earth, which I do. I mean, I'm certainly a Darwinist in that sense, that I think that the human species evolved of this planet. Um, then we are made of stars, because life came from the stars. Where else is it gonna come from? Yeah, Now what absolutely. about this beautiful, yes. Now this is, this is a lovely piece, it's called an Athame or Athame, there's different ways to pronounce it, um, and the handle is a mermaid. Now I always remember when I'm travelling internationally, which I do do a lot, to uh, make sure this is in the undercarriage, <laughs> not in the hand luggage. 
because I have been caught out with it. Wow. And I'm going like, but it's a religious artifact. I'm not going to stab anyone, but it looks a bit scary. Yeah. To be honest, it's it's not sharp. The point's a little little sharp, but it's used for conducting energy, not for chopping up babies ah. or children, you know, bats, blood. How does it like conduct that. energy? We believe that um, the metal, it's actually a magnetised blade. We believe that it acts as an extension of our will and we can we can move energy through and ah. and... and Again, it's, it's about how individuals relate to it, but in an in a electrical sense, we believe we can channel energy because it's metal, it's a medium of metal. And it is lovely. I, I mean, love the body. Thank you. Yeah, the, the mermaids, um, I actually bought this in Sacramento quite a long time ago, probably about 10, 11 years ago, when my band was touring and we went through Sacramento. And, um, and uh, yeah, she's beautiful. I'm a water sign, I'm Cancerian. Mm -hmm. And I love the imagery of mermaids. I love all the water mythology and I do a lot of scuba diving and so I tend to be, feel I'm a bit of a mermaid myself. <laughs> You see that there, but okay. um, yeah, but it's uh, yeah, very yeah. special piece, and it's resting, I should say, on this shell. This is from Northern Australia, and generally, it's traditional to have a, a brass disc with the, the penta pentagram on uh -huh. the uh, on the disc. But I, again, it's symbolism. It's what works for you. It's what speaks to you. Your will, your understanding of all this is what holds all this together and makes it magical. So this means to me similar to what the pentagram means, in that there's five points here, five oh, pearls that are pointed, okay. and the fifth, the round one being spirit. Ah. You know, all things begin and end in, in spirit here, so that's that's there. And this is this is actually like a, um, yeah, it was, what was it from? It was Cairns, like right up north. Oh, I've been to Cairns. Yeah, Cairns. 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 Oh, sorry, we say like Cairns, you guys Cairns. say Cairns. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so, there. yeah, it's a beautiful place, very special place. Mm -hmm. um, I've been very fortunate to spend some time with um, Australian Aborigines, like some of the elders, oh. not so much in Cairns, but further inland around Kakadu and, and north of Alice Springs, and um, their spiritual paths and uh, traditions, the way they approach life, great. very similar to to Wiccan, because it, it's earth, it's sh it's shamanic stuff, it's 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 um, relating to humans as being a part of this earth, not separate from it, and you know, in that sense, it's yeah, everyone kind of we all meet at some point, we can all have discussions about how we feel. In your book, you list different. Uh, rituals for different days of the week. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, in, in the new one, yeah, seven days. Well, because each day of the week has a planetary ruler. And okay. you even look at the origins of, of the names, like Monday, Moon Day, you know, it's Monday's ruled by the moon. All right. So and Tuesday? Tu Tuesday is Mercury. And um, Wednesday's Mars. Oh, is it the other way around? Hang on, Mars, Mercury. No, it's Mercury, Mars, yeah. And um, Jupiter's Thursday. Friday's Venus, which is love. And Saturday is Saturn. Mm -hmm. And um, Sunday is the sun. Well, so each each planet each planet or solar body, like the sun, is obvi obviously a star. But um, and the moon, you know, is is a, an asteroid, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, in that sense, it, we witches feel that you can work with these prevailing energies, and there's different colours that you can work with on those particular days, and there's different activities and different tasks that you can give yourself in a magical sense to do. And that's what the book is a guide to doing. And um, really, I think uh, the the impetus, I guess, for me to write this book was because I was getting so much feedback from people saying, oh, I'm really interested in it, but I don't really know if I'm a witch, and I don't know if I really, you know, gosh, like, there's so much to remember, and what if I put this in the wrong spot, and this is wrong, and, oh, you know, and so this book's really just to sort of get people started. It's for people who are drawn to the colour, I guess, and creativity of witchcraft, but don't want to actually be witches. Because I know on this book, I was reading through it, and it was like you have to devote a whole week do nothing else, and I mean, well, you can if you like. You can either okay. do seven days, or you can do one day at a time, or maybe like, um, say, Saturday is one of my favourite days in the book because it's a day to just release and banish negativity and fear and sadness. And you're working with the banishing energy of Saturn, so it's like, on Saturday, and it's a day off, it's a weekend, makes it a little easier. Um, but it's a very good day just to clear all that out. And you could just do Saturday, you know. But you might you might choose Thursday because you want to work on prosperity and you want to use the, the the good fortune aspects of Jupiter to draw things to you, the enormous energy of Jupiter to bring, bring prosperity and, and fertility to you. Let's just talk about romance for a moment. Okay, Friday, Venus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a spell would you do to bring in romance to one's life? I mean, mm -hmm. being in New York, mm -hmm. you're always so hectic, you're always on the go, mm. but you never really have time for romance. Yeah. But yet you want somebody. Yeah. What spell would you do? Well, I would do a very simple spell, and I think simple works. Keep it simple. Okay. Kiss theory. Um, you work with the element of fire, which is candle, and this is perfect. We have a red candle here. Red represents passion and love, and the candle, the element of fire, which is very, it's a very strong element. It's a very active element. It, it works fast, you know, when you work with the element of, of fire. So you could do something, and I, I often suggest this spell, but it's so easy, and it works, okay? Right. Seven days before the full moon, 
And if you can time that to be on a Friday, if it's roughly before a Friday, that's great. And we've, as of doing this interview, we have a full moon tonight. And ah. yeah, it's, ju it's just past full. So um, I would have started this spell last Friday, like the Friday before. Okay. Okay. To work with the building energies of the waxing moon up to full. I would get the candle, I would carve my name in one side. I lick my, like, not with the glass on it, this is just so we don't knock it over. Um, I would lick my thumb, seal the name, the carving, with my spit, puts my life energy into the candle. As you do that, you focus, you make the candle your own. And then you turn to the other side and you carve what you want. Say that again, what do you carve on the first Oh, one? your name, I'm sorry. Your own name? Yes, your own okay. name. You carve I'm your own name. Okay. Seal with spit, that makes the candle you. Okay. Your, your intent is in the candle. All right. Then you turn to the other side and you'll carve what you want. Now, you're not supposed to pick a certain person, so you can't say Brad Pitt or, um, <laughs> or uh, who else? Julio Iglesias. I don't know. Who else? Who's hot sounds at the moment? Sounds good. No one like that. Good. Anyway, so you, can't, you have to sort of specify the nature of the person you want, but not pick a specific person. There's one reason why you're interfering with their free will. All right. But another thing is, too, you don't really know what that person might be like. I had a girlfriend who did a very specific love spell and you know, she was out there scooping up soil from the footprint of the guy and she got some of his hair from the carpet That's on really the floor of the office. Obsessive. Oh, it was obsessive, absolutely obsessive, compulsive. She did that, she got him. But he was horrible. He was awful to her and oh, she wow. couldn't get rid of him. I write a little bit about it in this book. It was really quite strange. I mean, How did she get rid of him? Well, she had to do a banishing spell. <laughs> <laughs> Even then it was difficult for her. But I mean, you, you take action on the, on the practical plane as much as the magical plane. Okay. But you know, when you really understand the, sim the, the symbolism and the imagery you're using, then often spells really can work. But I mean, to complete this one, you would, you would maybe just kind of love or um, even peace of mind, peace of mind with love, like something you just want, you want romance, you know, mm. whatever. Carve that in the other side. Now you can get an essential oil like maybe um, rose or neroli or lavender. Um, there's, there's a whole lot of different oils that relate to love and they're mentioned in here too, but you just put a drop of that over the carving and as you do that, you imagine it coming to you. You light the candle, you focus on the flame just for five minutes and just meditate on bringing that color into you so that you're glowing red and you're just, you can just even repeat it, your little carving here of what you want, like passion, romance, like a mantra, romance, 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 and bring it into you, feel it coming to you, feel that it is your being. When you're ready, snuff the candle, don't blow it out because you blow away the magic. So you'd either just get a little snuffer or, or pinch it if you've got thick fingers. I don't have fingers. And um, no, I, I usually just get a snuffer, it's much easier or you can just cover it like that. But, um, and then relight it the next night. You do that building up to the full moon and by the full moon you'll have met someone. Oh wow. Try it at home. I <laughs> will, I definitely. That really there's, sounds there's fascinating. A, you, can, you can learn how to do that. There's all, the one thing I like about this book is that spell is in this book, but you mm -hmm. can relate that to anything. Have a red candle for lust, um, green candle for money, orange for willpower, yellow for intellect. You know, there's all different different. Okay, um, well let's qualities. go for a money spell. Money spell green. There's another money spell I really like though, which is um, it involves using a plant uh -huh. and you just have a little seedling, a pot and some soil. You write a list of what you want or, or let, like even get your bank statement, photocopy it, liquid paper out the current balance and put a big balance in there. It's all about how you register, it's your will again, you know, how, how real you make this. Fold the bank statement up, pop it in the bottom of the pot, put paper on, pot the seedling. Now every time, and if it can be a green pot, so much the better because green is the colour of fertility and opulence. So water it, nurture it, love it, grow it and as you know you're doing that, you're bringing fertility and prosperity into your life. And I've done something like that and it worked. How long does it take to work? Well, I've, I mean, you know, being quite candid, I did that first, did that spell when my band broke up and I was in really dire straits. It was dreadful. And, um, oh, I, I turned it around in five months. Five months? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Five months. I went from nothing to, you know, and paying $50 a week for an apartment because that's all I could afford to, you know. Paying five move. million a day. Well, you know, <laughs> not quite that, but certainly moving up in the world. And I, I think, again, though, it's practical and magical. I always take action on the practical plane. Um, uh, but, you know, I definitely think magic is, and the way, you know, the world answers according to the questions you ask of it. I often say that in my books, but it really does. If you project, then it will come to you. And it's, it's a little more, say, than, you know, Anthony Robbins, who's like an extraordinary motivational speaker. I mean, there's a little bit of that, that you know, that willpower, that focus in witchcraft, certainly. But also we, we feel that when we work with these sort of elemental things, the candles, the crystals, the, the, the incense, all these things, they're like magnets. They're extra ammunition off our sleeve to get what we want, you know? What would you leave the audience with? What would I leave the audience with? Mm -hmm. All acts of love and pleasure are sacred to the goddess. <laughs> <laughs> Take that how you will. <laughs> but it is. Like, all acts of love and pleasure are sacred to the goddess. It's all right to enjoy your life. It's all right to enjoy love and sex and 
the good things in life. This life here on earth is not penance that we pay till the good stuff comes later. Witches believe heaven is right here on earth right now and you've got to make the most of it. That is terrific. Mm. Tiana, I want to thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, it's Terry. so exciting. <laughs> I, oh, I know what I, I want to do. Out. Now, these are the things that one needs for their altar. Yeah, basically, again, I mean, we got a little bit kerfuffled before, but it's, it always is the way. Um, we have Earth represented. Now, Earth is represented here by Gaia, the right. statue of the goddess. Okay. Um, but it could be Earth goddess, but it could also be crystals. Mm -hmm. or a bowl of salt. I mean, I have the correspondences actually in this book more, which is Magical Journey. That I don't go into it as much here. A little I do. Um, enough for the beginner. Right. Um, but certainly earth represented, bowl of water for water. We've got incense for air and we've got fire in the candle. For romance. For romance, for love, for, for creativity, all these things. And these are things that you carry around with you all the time when you travel? Yes, you saw my little bag. I, I, was, <laughs> I had dinner with friends tonight at the Red Eye Grill. Fabulous restaurant. Goodness, I love the Red Eye Grill. And, uh, and then I trundled up, <laughs> carrying my little bag all the way up 56th Street or wherever we are. It was fun. I just, just, this is my little, little thing that I carry with me. And like I said, I always keep my samey. And again, this is not for cutting up children. It's for creating power, know, channeling energy and, yeah, moving your power from within, without and back in again, you know. And, um, but it's, yeah, it's never used for cutting anything solid. So you don't even use it to cut up herbs that you might use in a, mm -hmm. in a ritual um, or when you're making some incense or something. It's never used for cutting anything solid. Fiona, <laughs> thank you so <laughs> thank much. You, it's Mary. been wonderful All having right. you. <laughs> and I hope you've learned some wonderful spells to help you in life. Love to hear from you. Bye now. Cheers. <laughs>